given TPM transition probability matrix of a Markov chain. Okay, so I will say why this this Markov process Markov chain we are reading. We can guess the uh, given real time problem in a long run. What is the probability? What should happen in a long run? We are going to see that is called as steady state probability. The next we are going to see about. Okay, so this is the probability matrix given. Remember, P means P one. Okay, with initial. So initial probability means pure probability. Issue you can remember that it should be in small p and it is always a row matrix. So this is what given to you students. Okay, so let us see simple problems. First they are telling find probability of x two equal to three. Then probability of x two equal to three provided x not equal to one. Probability of x two equal to three. X one equal to two. Finally, probability of this is the big one. X three equal to two. X two equal to three. X one equal to three. X not equal to two. Okay. So let us crack this problem. Now, students, we know small p not. Let us write this zero point seven, zero point two, zero point three. Now, understand this is called state one, state two, and state Three at step zero. Can you understand? At step zero, this is state one point seven. Point two is state two. Point one is state three. Okay, students. Now let us see question one. Probability of x two equal to three. This is pure probability. Small p. So this is my step. That means I have to find p two at state three. At state three. So now you see I have. Only p not. Okay, so formula we have to go iteratively up to p two. So p one is equal to p not into p. So zero point seven, zero point two, zero point one. Then the original matrix. Okay, so this is my p one student. So uh, here you see this is one cross three. This is three cross three. So when you multiply, you will get again a one cross three matrix. That is a row matrix. Okay, so I will just write the values directly. You can do through either calculator or by manual calculation. So remember, always the pure probability will be a row matrix. This is done, but I need P two. So what I have to do? Similarly, you have to do the iteration. P two is equal to P one into capital P. So P one is point two two point four three zero point three five. So now again, I have to multiply with the same. Probability transition matrix capital P with this, so I will get my P two students very easily. Okay, so now let me write my P two. Okay, I will directly write the answer because if calculator is allowed, you can easily get the values: zero point three eight five, zero point three three six, zero point two seven nine. Now see, this is state one. This is state two. This is state three. Okay. So now let us see the question. What I need? Find P two at state three. Okay. So P two at state three. In state three, we have this value. This is my state three value. So the answer is zero point two seven nine. Okay. This is my answer. Sure. This is how you have to. Calculate the pure probability. So now this is very easy. So pure probability, what you have to do? You have to use this general formula, the transition. Okay, P n is equal to P n minus one capital P. So first one is done. Now let us go for question number two. So now let us go for the conditional probability. So remember, conditional probability means always capital P. Pure probability means Always small p. So pure probability we have to see the row matrix. Conditional probability we have to see the TPM. Remember this is very important. Okay, for pure probability go for the row matrix. Okay, the row matrix P K. At which step you don't know according to the question. For conditional probability always go for 
TPM, the given matrix. Transition probability matrix. Okay, now let us see this question, what they're asking. Now we are going to say x2 equal to 3, x1 equal to 2. So now let us see that step first of all. So you just remember the denominator should be always going to be the numerator here. So what is the difference between 2 and 1? The difference is 1. That means I can use my given probability matrix. Very good. Okay. This is done. Then let us go for the state. I said the future value always depends on the present value. So when you write a matrix, always present value should be the row and the future value should be the column here, 2, 3. So the answer is very, very simple. Okay. Now let us take the matrix P. P1. P1 is nothing but simply my matrix P. 2, 3 position. Let us go here. Copy this guy. I will write. Okay. The given matrix P or P1. P power 1. Both are same. 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Always remember, students, this is future and this is present. Okay. Xn minus 1 and this is the position Xn. Okay. So now let us number this because we have three states. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. So my uh, question is, what is my question? P over 1, this is my matrix. 2, 3 position. Tell me, students, what is the answer in the 2, 3 position? Second row, third column. 2, 3 position. So this is 0.2. So this is very easy, you see. So conditional probability, go for TPM. If it is pure probability, go for the row matrix. That's it, students. Okay, this is done. Now let us go for question 3. So question 3, what they're asking? Probability of X. 2 equal to 3. Ah, this is quite interesting. x1 equal to x0 equal to 1. Now you see it should be watched carefully. P1. So as I said, denominator will go numerator. Here the step is from 0 to 2. So it has two steps. Then this uh, position is 1, 3. Okay, now I know only P1. Okay, P power 1 matrix. So first of all, I have to find p square. So p square is nothing but p into p. You have to multiply this matrix. So don't do by manual calculation. You take a time. Just take your calculator. You know the methods or you can refer YouTube or Google how to use your calculator. Either 991MX or whatever calculator we use. You can easily do the matrix multiplication. Okay. So now let us find p square. Okay, I will directly write now because I have the data I have computed. 0 0.43, 0 0.31, 0 0.26, 0 0.24, 0 0.42, 0 0.30, 0 0.27. Done. Now we need p square 1, 3. Tell me students, what is p square 1, 3? 0 0.26. Thank you. So let us write this state. So 1, 3, first position, first row here. Okay. So this is always future and this is present. So this value is 0 0.26 students. Done. Okay. So now we have found the conditional probability as well as we have did the pure probability. Now let us go for the sequential probabilities. So we have a sequence. How to find the answer for the sequence? So this is like a game. Just how to find. So now the final question due to us is probability of x3 equal to 2, x2 equal to 3, x0 equal to 3, x0 equal to 2. Okay. So this is nothing but you have to write individually. x3 depend on x2, x2 depend on x1, x1 depend on x0. x0 is pure probability. So how can I express this? Probability of x3 equal to 2 bar x2 equal to 3 into probability of x2 equal to 3 given because this is Marco process only the future value depends on the present value then probability of x1 equal to 3 x0 equal to 2 so x0 don't have any it's a starting value so it will going to be the pure probability so it comes like x0 equal to 2 simply okay students now tell me students the probability so these three one two three are conditional probability if I, here I don't have any conditional probability, this is going to be my pure probability. Okay. Tell me student, now you have to, this is your turn. If you tell this, then you're clear. Okay. Tell me, see all the steps, 2, 3, 1, 2, 
one zero. So everywhere my step is one, right? Yes. For the first value, tell me the answer. So three two. Three two. Because we have to go from present to future, present to future, present to future. Common. Yes. Next one. So three three. Three three. Next. Two three. Two three. Here. Here. For the pure probability, the procedure is same. The denominator should come to numerator. That means my step is zero and two is my state. So at state two. So now this is my matrix is here. My matrix is available here. P one three two. This is my P one three two. This is my three two zero point four three three zero point three two three zero point two. So P not P not is my given question. Okay. This is my given question. P not, as I said, state one point seven, state two point one, point two, state three point one. So they are asking P not state two. State two is zero point two. So when you multiply all, you will get zero point zero zero four six. That's it, students.